All right. We are from Memphis. Every year we do a Memphis football preview. Let's go ahead and jump into this. We're going through all of it. The Memphis Tigers last year went, what, 11, 10 and 3? No. No, 11 and 3. 11 and 2. Well, it, if you count the bowl loss. But we're not counting uh, the bowl I don't loss. count bowls. Forget the bowl. I don't count bowls. All right, so 11 and 2. Well, no, no, no. It was, it was 10 and 2 because they, uh, they lost a game. They lost it, like, as in it didn't happen. They were supposed to play Georgia State. That oh, the game, game got, got rescheduled, canceled. all that kind of stuff because of the uh, the hurricane. Correct. So, uh, but ten and two made it to the uh, to the AAC championship game. Not too shabby. Let's look ahead though. 2018. Look, they have got seven offensive starters back. You're replacing quarterback Riley Ferguson and wide receiver Anthony Miller, who accounted for a ton of offense. Now, Ferguson and Miller broke school records. They were fantastic. How do you replace that? Uh, Anthony Miller is going to be really hard to replace, but they had a bunch of wide receivers they used last year. Ferguson, always tough to replace the quarterback. But, man, I, I kind of think that – I like the kid from Arizona State, I, I Brady Davis. Say, I, think, I think they're doing a really good job of reloading talent. At the level of football that they play in the AAC – Man, I, I think they are one of these teams that just year in, year out, they're going to win 10 games. I, I think you're probably right. It's not Brady Davis. It's Brady White. I think Brady Davis was a, a quarterback, and I think he transferred out. The quarterback <laughs> battle is between rising junior David Moore. Correct. He's been in the system for a while. He's been at Memphis for a while. And then Arizona State grad transfer Brady White. He's got two years of eligibility left. Look, this guy was the number four pro-style quarterback recruit in 2015. He was ranked ahead of Washington's Jake Browning, Missouri's Drew Locke. Like, this dude's he's, he's got legit. talent. He's but he, real. But he couldn't win the job at Arizona State. It's okay. So, and that's fine. He's a grad transfer now. He's following Mike Norvell. Mike Norvell actually recruited him to Arizona State. Correct. Uh, look for DeMonte Coxie to do a good job filling Miller's shoes this year. He's not going to do what Miller did, but he's still talented. Uh, the running back position is, is going to be the strong point loaded. of this offense. Loaded. Totally loaded. Uh, Daryl Henderson, Tony Pollard, Patrick Taylor, Sam Kraft is back for his sixth year. They're going to be calling him Dr. Kraft at some point. That's right. Uh, running behind four starters on the offensive line. Four returning yeah, starters. Yeah, returning the whole line almost. Now, it, the biggest thing for me is going to be defense. But they didn't play good defense last year. I don't but think that that scares they, me. They played better defense last year than they did the year before. They they got better. It was a bend, don't break. They, well, they bend, don't break. They didn't give up. But they also, they're really opportunistic in the sense they get turnovers, which means when they go after the ball and not go after tackles or breakups, sometimes the guys catch the ball. Yeah. But if they catch it, then they've turned the game completely around. Yeah. they Because they score on every drive. The biggest thing this year is – Senior linebacker, sixth-year senior linebacker, Jackson Dillon is back. He is an absolute team leader. It, every time he's been on the field, he runs that team. He's like the quarterback of the defense. So the fact that he is back, he is healthy. Like it, last year, he, was, he wasn't fully healthy, right? And he was gone after the first game for the whole year. So he got a medical redshirt, got a sixth-year of eligibility. Uh, they're going to miss Jannard Avery. Fifth-round pick to the Browns. But with T.J. Carter leading the secondary, Austin Hall, Jonathan Wilson, more guys leading the group, they should be significantly better this year than they were last year because they played a whole lot of freshmen and sophomores last year. Whole lot. So we're talking a lot about players. We, we haven't brought up coaching at all. And in college football, football in general, you know how much I value coaching. Everybody says players win games, players win championships. But it seems like the same coaches, no matter what players come into town, continue to do well, and other coaches just continue to lose jobs. I, I think Mike Norvell, if, if not the best coach in the conference, the second best coach to Charlie Strong. I think he might be better than Charlie Strong. See, I, I think he you can, and I you and I disagree on that. I think Charlie Strong is a unbelievable coach. I'm not saying that he's a bad coach. I just think that Mike Norvell might be better. He's really good. He's really he's young. He's really, really good. And he's got a system that works. He understands how to recruit really well. Uh, well, you got him going. I, what's look, the, hang on. What's the over-under for this team? I didn't even the look over, at it. You know what? I didn't even – oh, no, no, no. I did look at that. It's uh, The over-under is eight and a half. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah. Got to go cash some money. I'm, I'm going over. There. I'm going to tell you that. I'm going right. over. Um, look. 
let's just go through the schedule because okay. it's a one team thing. Let's let's do one, this. One team. Saturday, right. September first, they got Mercer at home. That's a win. Saturday, September eighth, I think we might be different on this. Okay. At Navy. All right. I got a loss there. Because they got like six months to prepare for that game, right? <laughs> I just think that Navy has always had Memphis's number. Correct, but they always play Navy in the middle of the end of the season where they've got one week to prepare for that option. Yeah, the the fact that it's early option does help Memphis. teams always lose when teams have long times to prepare for them. That's why they can't win bowl games. Uh, you might you might have a point there. All right, so at Navy, second game of the year, you don't really have to prep for Mercer. No. You think they got to win there? Sure. I didn't really do the wins and losses thing. I know how you do. Yeah, I, let's I go know. ahead. No, we'll, I'll give it a win. I'll okay, give, it a give it a win. Let's just do it. Uh well, you know, what? let's just let's give the record, and then we'll go through and we'll see where you think they might have landmines. How's okay. that? Yeah, I I'm got them going ten and two, seven and one in the AAC, and I've got them hosting UCF in the conference championship game. In what the are the two games you got them losing? Because you do this, I've got them losing at Missouri and at Navy and at Navy. Okay, those are two really tough games. I got them eleven and one because I didn't have the stones to make them go undefeated. And you, but you thought it was a chance. I don't. There's nobody on this team that scares me. Going into an SEC stadium on the road is a tough thing to do at any time. I do not what? believe in this Missouri team. They do not scare me. I think Memphis I is better from top to bottom at every level of the game than Missouri, and they're better at coaching than Missouri. Just because Missouri's in a big boy school doesn't mean anything to me. Here is the only problem that I've got with that. Okay. They play UCF the week before. Yeah, but this is not Scott Frost's UCF, and this is not – they lost so much talent. This UCF team's going to have a couple losses. I, I'm if with we you. we were going to do a breakdown of UCF, they're not going to be close they, but, to the team they were last but year. But this – it's not that. It's not that that I'm worried about. Okay. It is the emotional aspect of it because and you are hosting it, – it is the biggest home game. It is the biggest home that game. That Memphis has all year. And it's after they play at Tulane and they host UConn. And then Saturday, October 13th, they've got UCF at home. And I think they're going to be so amped up. And they, they may blow UCF right. out. Well, they could easily but, lose one of these two games. Yeah. I don't think – like I said, I didn't have the stones to have them going undefeated. I think they'll step on a landmine somewhere. But, I, you know. After the Missouri nobody, game – Nobody on this team scared – I mean, nobody on this schedule scares me. The only thing I wanted to look for as soon as the schedule came out was, do they play South Florida? And where is that and no. game? And they're not on the schedule. Yeah. And you know what? That made me want to say 12 and 0. Let's just do it. Well, here's, here's, let's go through the whole thing. Again. All right. Now, so, you, now we can run through it. September 1st, Mercer. September 8th, at Navy. September 14th, it's a Friday night. They Georgia host State. Georgia State. Saturday, September 22nd, South Alabama comes to the Liberty Bowl. Friday, September 28th, at Tulane. That's one of those triple option teams. Yeah, it could be, it could be wonky. And it's a short week. Really well-coached team. Yeah, Tulane's, Willie Fritz is Tulane's phenomenal. a great coach. Um, but it's a short week, Friday night. It, it's Going to play the option. It could, yeah. be, it could be the game they lose. It could be. Uh, then you've got Saturday, October 6th, UConn comes to Memphis. Saturday, October 13th, UCF. I don't think they're losing that. Because I think they're going to be hyped for that. Yeah. They lost to them twice last exactly. year. Exactly. Emotional game. Yeah. Uh, and they got embarrassed in one of them. Oh, I mean, just yeah. awful. Uh, Saturday, October 20th at Missouri, which is immediately following UCF. That's just a, a, a bad scheduling move. Um, it, it's nobody's fault, but, no. like, golly, it, you're so emotionally hyped for UCF, and then you got to go to Missouri. Like, But I think they can do know. that just because Missouri is on the road. It's easy to get – you don't ever let your guard down when you go on the road. Agreed. I think if those games were reversed, I'd be more afraid of Central Florida. Yeah, because you whichever let, one was first, you're you, going to be hyped up. You for that let one. your guard down at home really easily. You're you're yeah. good at chalk up W's at home. You're right. You're right. Uh, then we've got Saturday, November third, at East Carolina. November tenth, Tulsa comes to the Liberty Bowl. Friday, November sixteenth, at SMU. Sonny Dykes is back in the league. Yeah, I, I just don't know what I think about SMU yet. I need to. Watch I don't either. I, need, I I don't know enough about that team now that Morrison's gone, and I just need to see what they're going to look like yeah. before I judge them so at all. I, I do think that Memphis has more talent than SMU, so that you know, oh, no. shouldn't be a problem. I think and they've then, got the most talent in the conference other than maybe South Florida. Yeah, you might be right. Uh, or I mean, honestly, UCF has recruited really well, too. And they lost a lot of experience. Saw, they but, lost so many starters. I wouldn't be able to tell you who any of these new backups are coming to well, play. So they've still got McKenzie uh, Melton or whatever his name is, the the quarterback. Correct. I should know no, they that didn't, name. No, they didn't God lose him. No, yeah. 
So they got him back. They got the running back back. They, they lost you know, a lot, on, a defense, lot on defense. A lot yeah. on defense. Not that they were great on defense anyway, but uh, yeah, but still. Um, some of those guys were good. Houston comes in Friday, November 23rd, and like that's that the end of the have, schedule. I like the way of Houston at the end of the year at home. If, I, if that I was like a that. road game, I would think that could easily be a landmine. They and it, it almost season. was last year. I know. They, they have a great season. Then they end the season on the road, and they kind of let down. That's one I just hope they don't. Get too big for the britches, chalk up the W, and, and lose. But I got them 11 to – I'm telling you this, eight and a half. I don't know that we can go down to gold strike and get eight and a half as a number. I mean, they might have nine. I think MGM is going to inflate that number being so close to Memphis. We'll, we'll have to check that out at gold strike. Just, we'll have to see. Just because I cannot fathom them losing nine, eight games – you know, not eight games, sorry, four, four of these games. I just can't. I, I can't either. I don't see four losses anywhere on here. Now, I could be completely wrong. The, at Navy, at Missouri, and UCF. And then maybe and then maybe, maybe one of the others. But that's, Houston, here's the deal. If they maybe lose to Tulane, I don't think they lose one of the others. Like yeah. I, I think there's like this pendulum thing to where, yeah, you got a three-game stretch of tough games. And you might lose two, but you're not going to lose all three. It's just not the way the ball bounces. Yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. All right, so to wrap it up, I got them ten and two, seven and one in the AAC, and I've got them winning the conference this year in the Liberty Bowl. I got them going to a New Year's Six Bowl. Yeah, I think they're going to be the. I need to see what South Florida does and who wins that championship game. I think the winner of that championship game gets the New Year's Six Bowl game. I, I, a lot of people like Boise State. I'm not so high on. Boise I'm going to tell you this: if if the South Florida Memphis winner only has one or two losses, and Boise has one or two losses, the South Florida Memphis winner is going to go. Yeah, they're going to go over Boise. That they're better programs for the last couple of years. They play better talent. I think they're better conferences. Um, I just think it's a it's a better conference in the Mountain West. I think you're probably right. All right, so that wraps up the Memphis prediction. Memphis, you got a lot to look forward to this year. 